Hi everyone, welcome back to Rose Stops Buying Stuff. Today we are doing my February money diary and monthly reflections. I have got a lot to talk about, so this might not be the most cohesive of videos, but yeah, we're just going to go through it. I would maybe grab some refreshment because it's going to be a really long one. I'm going to start by going through my actual money diary and what I spent my budget on in February. 1st of February I spent quite a lot of money. I spent £55 at seatplan.com buying a ticket to see Endgame. I spent £65 with the National Theatre buying a ticket to see A Taste of Honey and I spent £15 on socialising local cafe that was selling a £50 voucher for £30. Lauren and I decided to get that so that we're actually going for brunch tomorrow which is the 1st of March which is when you're watching this. It was £15 each to pay £30 to get the £50 voucher. Tomorrow I won't spend any money is generally the plan. So yeah, that's what that was. 4th of February I spent £55 buying a ticket for a number. On the 11th of February I spent £1.99 on books. Our stop by Laura Jane Williams was down to £1.99 on Audible for a special offer so I bought that. Now at this point because, and I should say actually I should have started by saying that, my opening budget for the month of February was £293 and a penny. I get £250 a month as my monthly budget. I had £43 and a penny unspent from my January budget, which is rolled over. So I'd started with £293 and one pence. Say I had £300 just to be easy. I had spent £55 and £55 is £110, £175 on experiences and services, £15 in socialising, which would be £190. And books I'd spent one ninety nine, so one hundred and ninety one ninety nine I'd spent up till this point in the month from my budget spends. And then on the twentieth of February, this is where it all goes very wrong. I went to get my hair done, and I went over my budget, and I'm really pissed off about it because it's literally the second month of the year, and I have screwed over my budget. I have failed on sticking to my budget, and do you know why? Because I don't know how much. I didn't know how much it was going to cost me to get my hair done. I've been getting my hair done once every four weeks for the past two years and I thought it was around about the £100 mark and it wasn't until I was actually standing at the desk to pay and it was £129.50 and, and that was with a discount because I get a 10% discount for a loyalty discount thing because I've been going for so long. In my head I had enough money left in my budget because I was expecting it to be about £100 and it threw me over my budget because I went in and was getting a service that I didn't know what the cost was because I have paid so little attention to how much I spend in the past years of my life that I knew this was a three figure sum in my head and I thought it was about the £100 mark um, and I didn't actually know what it was going to be. Part of that is because sometimes I get my whole head dyed, sometimes I just get my roots done Sometimes I just get it blow dried and sometimes I get it cut. This time I got my whole hair dyed, so I didn't just get my roots done, and I got it cut and blow dried. So I got all three things done. Whereas I think what I must have been doing in the past without actually trying to, doing it so that if I was getting my hair cut, I was doing that when I was just getting my roots done so I wasn't paying for my whole hair to get dyed because basically I've been alternating so that like say in January I would have got my roots done then in February I would have got my whole head done then in March I would have got my roots done April whole head done so on and so forth um, and I only actually get my hair cut maybe like three times a year. I looked at my receipt because they emailed me my receipt and I looked at it and basically it was £55 for the fact that I got my hair cut as well as blow dried whereas I think it's only £30 if I just get my hair blow dried and then the dye was however much the dyeing must have been because I got my whole head done rather than just my roots and as I say I got a 10% discount as well. I'm really annoyed that I went over my budget. If I hadn't gone over my budget maybe I would have just kept kind of trundling along not really knowing what I was actually spending like maybe in a way I'm trying to be really positive here. Maybe in a way it was a good thing I went over my budget because it made me actually look at my receipt and be like, what have I paid for here? I just, I don't know what to do. Because I sent a message to Lauren and I was like, I've, I've just gone over my budget and my hair cost me £130 and that's with a discount. And like, how have I been spending that every like once a month without even realising I was spending it? 
then I did send her a screenshot and been like, well, this is how it's breaking down. I actually, I actually thought when I came out that they'd done a huge price increase. I was like, it's usually £100, how is it suddenly 130 Like, uh, I was like, they must have done a price increase over like Christmas and New Year, which they have done a little bit, but not, not by that much. And then I'd sent her the screenshots and broken it down and been like, oh, I paid 55 because my, I got my hair cut and blow dried and then I'd found an old receipt in my emails and it would have been 25 or 30 if I hadn't got the haircut. And Lauren wrote back to me and was like, yeah, my cut and blow dry is 25 pounds at my hairdresser for both because she goes somewhere that's not in the city centre. So I know I'm paying premium because I go to a city centre salon. I, I just, I don't know what to do. I don't know whether I keep going because I really like the colour. I mean, my cut is really like, please take off the minimum split ends. Like I really don't get my hair cut. I can't do anything about the blow dry because they're not gonna I'm not gonna go home with wet hair. So the only costs I can really negotiate are that I could get my hair cut elsewhere, which that's only a cost that I incur maybe two or three times a year. But I really like the colour and I feel like my hair's in really good condition, although I get it dyed, I feel like these the Davines colours work well for me. I don't think there's another Davines salon and I think as well Davines is a premium brand, so I'm even if there was an alternative salon, I don't think it'd be that much cheaper. And I just, I'm, I really don't know what to do. I can't afford £130. If I'm trying to live on £250 a month, I can't afford £130 on my hair every, like, six weeks. I just, I can't. And I really, I put my hair off for so long. So I was really feeling at the end of January that my hair needed done. Because I've been used to getting my hair done every four weeks. I feel like this sounds so shallow. I'm so sorry because it sounds so ridiculous that this is actually giving me as much stress as it is. But I've been used to getting my hair done every like four to five weeks. I generally went the first Saturday of every month. I had gone just before Christmas, like the last Saturday before Christmas, I'd gotten my hair done because we were away in London between Christmas and New Year. Then I didn't get it done in January and I was supposed to get it done at the start of February. I was feeling like at the end of January I was like I feel like my hair needs done. I was really conscious of it and then I actually ended up I couldn't make it. Something came up and I had to move the appointment and I ended up getting it done on the 20th. I was so desperate to get it done like that had been about eight weeks and I was so desperate to get it done I felt like it looked terrible. And so I don't want to wait eight weeks. That's, that's my takeaway is that eight weeks is too long. That was bothering me too much to leave it eight weeks every time I get my hair done but I can't afford it more regularly than that. I can't live off £250 a month that has to include things like services be spending that in my hair but I also don't want to go elsewhere. I don't want to compromise on anything and that's the issue and something's going to need to give. So the next time I get, I've got my next appointment because I made it before I left, which I've made for the start of April and I'm just going to get my roots done and I'm not getting it cut and I'll see what that costs and then I'm going to try and work out from there. It's not going to be £130 every single time because this has been like most premium cut that I'm going to get and that I got it, or the most premium appointment and that I got it cut and got the whole thing dyed. But it's trying to work out what's realistic because I've been getting it done every four to five weeks like getting the roots filled in one time then getting it all, all done the next time's been fine if I'm leaving it that little bit longer in between is the rest of it going to fade so that when I get the roots done if I just get the roots done is it going to look really daft or my roots going to be a lot brighter than the ends of my hair I don't know this is what I need to assess I suppose what I'm saying is really I have to and this was the point of doing the budget, so I don't know like why this is bothering me as much as it is. I need to either give up something else that I'm spending money on if I want to continue getting my hair done where I get it done. And I need to make that choice that I'm prioritising the hair over other things. Or I need to find an alternative hair solution. And if I'm honest, at the moment, the most appealing option is finding an alternative hair solution because my current hair solution has pushed me over my budget in February which is really frustrating. How I'm handling that, so that means my total spend in the month of February was £321.49. So that meant I went over my budget by £28.48. What I'm just going to do is take that off of my March budget. I actually had a moment where I was ready to throw away the whole project because I had failed. I hate like, like I can't even explain. This gives me like physical tension that I failed at this. Like it's really bothering me and it's almost like, 
sorry if this is if diet chat's gonna be triggering so skip on 30 seconds or something if it is but it's almost like when I was doing like Slimming World or whatever, whatever diet plan I was doing, it almost became like if I had one thing that was over my like calories or sins or whatever the stupid allowance is, if I went over it by the tiniest bit, I'd be like, oh well, we're over it. So let's just, let's just do whatever. Let's eat everything in sight. And it was that same feeling of like, I've been constricted and now I've kind of gone over the constriction. So let's just throw it all to hell. That was what I was really tempted to do and I didn't. I didn't spend any more money for the rest of the month and it's killing my soul. Like I, I feel so disgusting and so annoyed about the fact that this has happened. I'm so repulsed by the fact that I actually couldn't keep my shit together to manage this for two months. Like the second month. Two months. Like honestly. See if this had even happened the very last month I could be like oh well you know I've done at least 11 months and this one has happened. It's the fact this has happened in month two. The only redeeming factor, not that it's a redeeming factor, but the only thing I can take from it is that I did not consciously decide to go over my budget and I had a mini heart attack when I was actually at the till point. I had to move money out of my normal bank account into my Monzo account because I'm using my Monzo to live from for my budget and it was horrible and I just, the whole thing was so sickening and I was so ashamed and my hairdresser's like standing there telling me about the special offers they've got on in their products and I was like I'm already over my budget like can you piss off and stop telling me about products like and then I was like it's not his fault like why are you angry with him he's just doing his job telling you about the products he's got to tell you about it but I was so angry in that moment I was so ready to lash out at like anything what I've decided is that I'm not I can't just throw this away I need to learn from it. Rather than just being like, well, I'm giving up the whole project because I've gone over, I'm taking it out of my March budget. So my March budget will now be £221.52 to recoup that money, which I don't ever want to have to do again for the rest of the year. I said at the start of the year, if I don't spend it, it can roll forward, but I can't take money forward. This is specifically what I didn't want to be doing, but it's happened and I just need to deal with it. So the best way I can deal with it is by saying, right, well, we'll take it out of the March budget and we start March minus that money. March budget will be £221.52 because we went over the February budget. I'm really pissed off, I'm really annoyed. I just feel like a complete failure and I've just had the shittiest month, which I'll talk about now anyway. And I could have just really been doing without this happening this month. I feel like I have been the most tested person on the planet this month which I know is ridiculous I know lots of people have it a lot worse than me but I have just had the shittiest month. To go on to talking about other things that I spent this month I spent £585 on self gifting so I did have my Valentine's Day gift which I bought on the 1st of February we're going to have a chat about that and I spent £12 on replacements so that was on the 19th month I finished up my Glossier hydrating serum. I tried the Dr. Jart um, ceramide and liquid which I really liked and they also in that range have a hydrating serum. Now I know the Ordinary have one that's kind of similar to the Glossier one so that's kind of that's probably one I'm going to purchase. But this little set was on ASOS and it had the ceramide and liquid a moisturizer and a little mini of the serum for £12 and I had my ASOS voucher so I used the voucher to pay for this, I didn't actually spend the £12, so vouchers I can spend on anything within the rules of my no buy, but I did count this as a replacement because the main thing I was buying it to try was the serum. Now as you can see the serum is missing and I'm going to be honest, at some point it's disappeared. I used it a couple of times, it was in my bedroom, I didn't take it out of my bedroom, checked like under the bed, I've checked under the furniture because I thought I must have dropped it in its roll somewhere. But no, I can't find it, it's just disappeared off the face of the earth. That was my replacement that I bought, that I had this whole thing that I was like, oh I can use my voucher, then I can try the liquid, and my whole thought process was, I'm going to try the liquid on its own in my normal skincare routine, and see if I still feel that I need a hydrating serum, and then I was going to try the serum on its own without the liquid, and actually figure it out, because I think it's so easy to get sucked into thinking that you need like a 12 step skincare routine and you don't actually assess whether you do need that or not. So that, that was the whole method as to why I bought this. 
and I've, I've lost one of the fucking products so yeah. I just had to stop filming for a while there because there's loads of noise. It just literally feels right now like the whole universe is conspiring against me. I'm at that point right now where I just either want to punch somebody in the face or just sit down and cry. One or the other, not sure which, probably sitting down and crying would be um, better and that I might not go to jail. Oh my god. But yeah, that is everything that I actually spent. So let's get into the really joyful part of talking about how I felt this month and how I feel like that's reflective of this no buy budget year project. Well, unsurprisingly, it's not been a good month. Feelings wise, I don't know if that's maybe really obvious. Obviously, I can't really know. I can't go live the month again. I am somebody who just deals with mental health and maybe this would have just been a rubbish month for me regardless of all the other stuff that was going on. You know, maybe it was literally just a dippy month. Dippy sounds so funny. It's so unbelievably not funny. But I, I can't know that. I can't turn back time and go live the month again without having the budget in place so I don't know if that's definitely what's caused it. This month I feel like the no buy, probably the no buy more that like the budget, the failure of the budget has, was a really big issue for me but that kind of didn't happen until the 20th. I don't know that's, it's been a thing in that like I was putting my hair off and then I did actually debate putting it off until March just because I knew that it was going to use like all of my budget when I when it was going to cost what I thought it was going to cost rather than being all of my budget plus some. My budget and being annoyed about the fact I had to think about putting my hair off till March and the fact that it was really irritating me that I felt like my hair was really untidy, that, that did get to me this month. But I think it's the no buy more than anything else that's kind of really caused the emotions of this month. So on the 1st of February I bought my Valentine's Day gift which I'd written into my rules that I could get a Valentine's Day gift, a birthday gift and a Christmas gift this year and those were my sort of three opportunities. And I didn't talk about this in January but I decided what I wanted and it was these shoes and they'd gone on sale basically but I hadn't realised they'd gone on sale after Christmas or I would have probably bought them in between Christmas and New Year and saved myself the angst. Through January I spent so much time checking various websites and making sure they were still in stock. I didn't give in and get them in January, I did wait until February until I was allowed them as per my rules but I think in January whatever the sort of positive feelings that I get out of the self-soothing, whatever, the dopamine release, I don't know. I think maybe because in January I was really focused on the shoes and in checking different websites and seeing if they were still in stock in the Dolce & Gabbana website and seeing if they were still in stock in Farfetch'd and figuring out like, you know, where was the best place to get them from and like they were more on sale on this website but I was going to have to go down a size did I want to try this size. The whole of January was very consumed by that and I, I think maybe the fact I was on a no buy didn't really settle in in January because the pursuit of these shoes was going on. Whereas once I had got them on the 1st of February, maybe that's when the reality had been like, right, you now can't buy anything. Maybe the reality of that kicked in this month. Or the other side of it is that in January, I had a lot of transactions on things that I was buying from my budget. So they weren't they weren't breaking my budget, I was within my, I was under my budget in January, but I had a lot of transactions. So in January I made 19 transactions, whereas in February I made a total of 6 transactions and my February transactions as well were all the tickets that I knew I wanted to buy. I bought in the 1st of the month and the 4th of the month, the voucher for brunch tomorrow I bought in the 1st of the month and then it was the 11th of the month that I bought the book and then the 20th of the month that I got my hair done. So. Although I didn't break my no buy or my budget because what I was buying in January, mainly those transactions are all food on the go, but I think that because I had so many transactions in January as well, that might have also helped it that it didn't hugely sink in that I was doing this no buy because maybe like although it was going to a shop and buying food or buying juice while I was at work, those little consistent pockets of buying things still satisfied that sort of slight high that I would get when I buy something like maybe that was releasing enough dopamine even though it was like buying food and not buying things 
maybe just that action itself was enough that I felt like I was buying things and I felt, felt like I was spending money and my body got whatever chemical release it is that it gets from feeling good about it when I buy things that you know whatever that is that dopamine that I get when I buy things that makes me you know when I was very depressed that made me want to keep buying more and more and more because it was the only time that I felt good was that little moment of like oh I just bought something maybe that happened in January in a less noticeable way than it happened when I was consistently getting that like high and then that come down and then buying something else to get that high again when I was shopping in a super problematic way when I was very very depressed maybe this maybe I just didn't notice that I was getting it in January because it wasn't like I was in that depth of despair then this moment of feeling better and then crashing again but maybe that was a more consistent release or dosage of that dopamine release that I didn't notice usually that I was on the no buy whereas in February after I bought that stuff on the 1st of February I was like that's me I'm out like I can't buy anything else and I think that's maybe when it started kicking in and that's when all the feelings just like just went completely awry as I said this video is probably going to be super all over the place because I don't I feel really incoherent at the moment which is probably a reflection of the fact that I don't feel great at the moment at all honestly don't even quite know how to organize this is how I feel at the moment so as I say this video is probably going to be jumping about all over the place I'll start with the notes that I've taken on my budget so I took these notes about halfway through the month so I bought my end game ticket which was £55 on seatplan.com and I didn't feel good about it. I saved money by not buying it straight from the old Vic which was my original plan and they were £108 and I ended up in a seat that I think would have been £108 from the old Vic. Saved money, it was basically half price but I just I didn't feel good about it. I felt like I'd compromised on my integrity and on my morals by getting that ticket for half price. The thing is, I feel slightly uncomfortable as well because the fact that I feel like that then makes me examine why do I feel like that? My morals are books and the theatre. Those are my two sort of things where... The thing is, I feel like basically anyone who's got disposable income has a responsibility to spend it wisely which sounds stupidly ironic talking when it's coming from somebody who's like yeah I didn't know how much my hair was costing me for the last two and about years anyway what I mean by that though is that I remember when Borders was in Glasgow and it was my favourite like I loved it I could spend whole afternoons there like I queued up there for the Harry Potter midnight release of books I loved Borders now Borders shut down and in my head Borders shut down because Everyone started buying their books on Amazon or at the supermarket where it's cheaper. People weren't supporting actual bookshops and therefore we lose the bookshops. That That's very much how I see it. I don't really, I buy Audible books from Amazon. This is where this all gets really grey and really starts to bug me. I've signed up to Audible and I, I bought that book this month from Amazon because it was on, it was an Audible recording that was down to 1.99. I have no qualms about buying that from Amazon. But like I wouldn't buy a book from Amazon. I would go to Waterstones to buy a book. Audible book, audio books seem to be a different thing in my head. But actual paper physical books, I will go to a bookshop. I won't buy them from Amazon. It's because I feel like I've got this responsibility where if I want Waterstones to stay open and not go the way of Borders, we need to fund it. It's one of those things where that's how I feel about books. And that also applies to how I feel about the theatre. And the thing is, I've bought this this plan this ticket from seat plan and I kind of in a way I think what's helped sort of assuage my guilt on it well it's not really assuaged it because I'm still talking about it but what I think made it what justified it for me in the moment was that the cast in Endgame the main two characters were played by Alan Cumming and Daniel Radcliffe and I was a bit like they're getting paid this is not like I'm not getting this deal ticket on something that's then you know it's taking money away from young actors who are trying to make it in the industry like they're getting paid they're definitely getting paid that was what was there for me they're not relying on these seats being sold for x amount to make this production feasible but I still don't feel good about it I feel like 
the old Vic probably wants you buying it straight from their website to keep the theatre running. I didn't buy a programme or anything when I was down because I'd gone over my budget and I've basically decided that when I'm in London or if, like if I'm away from home that buying food comes under my health and safety exclusion. It doesn't need to come out of my budget because I need to eat and it's not like food on the go where I'm choosing to eat it rather than eat at home. It's like I'm, I'm too far away from the house to have an alternate to buying food. So I'm not taking that from my budget, but if I was to buy like a programme or something from show that I'd gone to see, I would have to put that under experience or like if I got my eyebrows done at Blink, which I quite like doing generally when I'm in London, that would come out of my budget because they are things I am choosing to spend money on rather than having to spend money on. I didn't buy a programme either of the productions that I went to and I felt really bad about it because I know again buying the programme, buying drinks at the interval etc that's really what funds the theatre. I didn't do that and I bought the ticket like from seatplan.com instead of paying the full whack from it and it made sense for my budget to do that but I didn't feel good about it. I felt like I'd really compromised on my morals I didn't like how that made me feel as much as like now because I've gone over my budget for that month and I know how rubbish I feel about that. It's one of those ones that's really easy for me to sit here and say right now what I wish I'd done was even if I paid, if I paid the full price from the Old Vic website for the ticket and had to get my hair done in March, I wish I'd got my hair done in March anyway because then I wouldn't be sitting feeling like I threw my budget out the window the second month that I was on it. But I know I, the thing is it's easy to say that but I know how rubbish I felt about the fact that I just felt like my hair looked awful and dull and untidy. Maybe that's just being idealistic. It kind of links to one of the other things that I've written down that I wanted to talk about is the sort of the reality I think started setting in this month about the sort of idealism of budgeting versus the reality in terms of my non-budget spends. With my £250 a month budget, as I said, it didn't come out of nowhere. I looked at what I get paid and I took away my bills. I took away my weekly shop. I took away everything that I need to pay. I then took away what I put into savings every month. That left me with what I would say is my disposable income. However, and this is where, when I say, unless I want to compromise my holidays, I need to live off of £250 a month. What I then took off was the amount I'd like to put to my holidays every month. And that left me with just over £250 and then I put like an extra £17 a month or whatever it was into my holidays. So that was left with a nice round budget of £250 a month. What that means is that whenever I buy anything that is a non-budget spend and is not a bill or a regular outgoing that I've factored in, that money comes out of what is potentially holiday money. In my head, it was very like, simplistic and that my bills were accounted for, my regular spends were accounted for, my budget covered most things and I just had these couple of exceptions that were going to eat into my holiday money every month and that's why I'm not too worried about certain th about things that I'm making non-budget spends because for example like I've said technology is something I don't need to take out of my budget because I don't have an issue with it and I know as well I'm not going to develop an issue with it because right now I would really like a microphone for filming with. I feel like it would really increase the quality of my audio. But having looked at the Rode microphones, they are sort of around £150. That to me I'm like, mm, I would like this but do I want to take £150 out of my holiday money for it? Not really. My holidays are more important to me than most of the things that I've put down is non-budget spends so that's why I'm not worried about those non-budget spends or like when I take but I'm saying like when I'm in London I'm taking the food that I buy to eat out of my health and safety budget because I'm not using that as an excuse to have a Mitchell and Stark meal because I know when I use that money that that is money that could be going to my holiday but there are certain things that I can't avoid paying that are not regular that I've not really budgeted for and that came up this month because I had to get a filling at the dentist and that comes under health and safety so it was a non-budget spend. Then I was really annoyed about paying for that because it was coming out of what I was now seeing as my holiday money rather than you know before I would have just paid it and been like yeah it was this much and it came it just came out of my bank account and I wasn't breaking down my bank account into this is for x and this is for y and this is for z. So the sort of reality of that 
I think kicked in a little bit this month when I had to go to the dentist because I was a bit like I really begrudge this because I'm seeing this as having the potential to be holiday money but realistically I probably need a little pot of money that I would maybe have to pull out over a year or something like maybe next year I'll have like an annual sort of pot of money that I put aside that is for dental bills and glasses and general health and safety spends or technology spends or replacing things that are not you know like replacement beauty items or whatever things that I don't want to spend money on but have to like a sensible spends fund like maybe next year I'll have I'll take that out and put it into a different Monzo pot or something so that when those things come up the money is there for them rather than it feeling I'm taking that out of my holiday budget every month. The sort of ideal that I had where I was like oh I can put all this money towards my holiday every month and then by the time we're going to New York I'm gonna have so much money because I'll have paid off the holiday within x amount of months and then I'll have saved all this money for spending money because I'm gonna save all this every month. The reality of that maybe kicked in this month a bit in that I did have to pay for food in London and I did have to pay for my dental filling. I was like, oh, I'm really begrudging this coming out. But yeah, there's not much more to say in that other than the sort of reality versus the idealism of what I was thinking about that money as being going towards my holiday. That kind of started to kick in and that wasn't a great feeling. 